Welcome to the Entrepreneur Master Series with me, the real Jason Duncan, here with you live today, and it is January the 18th. I've got a guest expert named JJ, who's going to be with us in just a minute. So I'm going to turn the uh, camera off. Just hang tight. We'll be right with you. All right, so... Uh, for those of you that are watching the recording of this, nothing happened. You have no idea what we've just been dealing with for the last 12 minutes. <laughs> I tried. Jay and I've been sitting here talking to each other, figuring out what the hell's going on. We don't know what's happening, but it looks like people are starting to roll in. So uh, thank you for being patient. Um, Zoom, we had a we had an issue with Zoom. So you, this is not you. It's not you. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> so what we had was uh, Zoom was supposed to automatically send you the link and it did not automatically send you the link. So I'm going to have to make a note to make sure that that gets changed up next time. And uh, my assistant, Wendy, looks like she's just joined us. So Wendy, uh, you and me on the next one, we this is not Wendy's fault, nor is it my fault. Zoom did this. We need to auto accept uh, registrants to these webinars. For some reason, the thing got clicked over to the wrong thing in Zoom. So I'm not sure what happened, but we're here, you're here. And if you're watching the recording of this, you don't care about any of this crap. You just wanna hear what we're gonna talk about today. So I wanna in introduce to you our guest today. We're gonna have a great time. Uh, this, this good looking young man right here on the screen in front of you is Jay Jay, and he's got a pink, what is that in the background? Is that a unicorn? What is that? I was going to say, firstly, if you think this is a pink jacket, like no, no, no. Someone the thing in the back. Like, oh, dude, this is this is. Yeah, yeah. Let me show it. Well, you can see it's a it's a it's a 56 inch stuffed unicorn. And the reason for this is that a buddy of mine is starting a conference called Unicon, which is a unicorn conference. And the big thing that was a struggle for me for many years is I didn't feel like I fit in. I still don't feel like I fit in. I feel like I'm unique. No one understands me. So we wanted to make a conference for people who feel like they're special and unique and have the best of the best. So it's basically a business conference with a unicorn spin. And bro, who doesn't love unicorns? Uh-huh. Well, they are the unicorns. When you find a unicorn, you want to hang on to it. Dude, so, exactly. Uh, You'd be surprised at what you can buy off Amazon when you start putting unicorn. Well, this guy that you see right here talking <laughs> in the uh, the cool accent is Jay Jay. Uh, he's an international speaker. He's been moving people with his message for the last 15 years in over 30 countries. And in 09, he leveraged his social media platform on YouTube to get over 57 million views as a magician, which I don't know if he's going to do any tricks, <laughs> tricks for him. But uh, leaving his tricks behind, he mastered uh, PR and decided to start a PR agency and branding, personal branding public relations called the ace of spades out of Miami he does some work in LA and they help personal brands be seen as number one in their industry. And I got Jay, uh, somehow we got connected on Instagram because I love Instagram. It's my favorite social media platform. Uh, unless you go looking for it, you don't get any of the political BS. Uh, you don't hear, <laughs> you can find anything you want, but it's just people sharing the best part of their lives. It's encouragement. It's, it's such a cool thing. I don't get paid by Instagram, but I love that platform and what it does to connect people. And I've been connected with some amazing people over the last several years being on Instagram on the platform. One of them is this guy here, Jay, Jay, and he's going to be talking to us today. He's going to do most of the talk and I'm going to do a little, I'm going to run off at the mouth for a little while and talk about some stuff. And then I'm going to pepper him with some questions. We're going to get really, really tactical in this. But Jay came on, uh, came to Nashville uh, a little month ago, I guess, and or maybe in December. And he came on as a guest on The Root of All Success, which is my podcast. And so he came on as a guest and I was impressed by him. And I said, man, you need to come on to the Entrepreneur Master Series and share with us your master secrets about how to do personal, uh, uh, personal branding, how to do public relations. And that's what we're going to talk about. And I've got some cool questions for him that he doesn't even know. We didn't, we did some oh, prep work, which he really should, good. but I got some, I, I'm going to bring it. I'm going to bring it. And he's going to have to, he's going to have to, he's going to have to be honest with me <laughs> and make sure that he's telling me the truth. Cause I got some hard questions and they're not, they're really about me. <laughs> so, so I'm going to use right. this opportunity to make my personal brand better, but let me tell everybody where we're at right now really quickly. And again, for those of you that are here live, 
sincere apologies for the registration issues. That was a Zoom problem. Um, and we, we will get that fixed the next time you come, we, we will have zoom will fix that we won't have that issue anymore because I know you got in this endless registration link, uh, you know, crap and I don't know I don't know what happened so here we are. Um, I want to tell you why we're doing this. So my name is the real Jason Duncan, and I do this entrepreneur master series twice a month. And uh, I'm going to start live streaming these sometime in February. I'm, I'm working on getting approval with LinkedIn and getting all the stream stuff that you got to set up because live streaming is a little bit more difficult than just doing a Zoom webinar. But I'm going to start live streaming these. But why am I doing this? Number one, I'm doing this because I meet some amazing people like Jay who have very tactical and specific instructions and tips on how to make your life better as an entrepreneur. And that's what I wanted to do. I want to bring value to you. Now, the other reason I'm doing, it's part of my membership program called The Successful Entrepreneur. Now, for $55 a month, you get access to this type of training on a regular basis. I do three to five live trainings every single month, just like this. I do two of these Entrepreneur Master Series a month. Like I've got one coming up next Tuesday as well. So we do these on Tuesdays. I get a personal, I got a friend of mine, somebody that I know that can come in and share some amazing tips, which we're going to talk about personal branding today. We're going to talk about how to avoid wasting money on a business coach next week. I've talked about how to get a million dollars in funding for your company. I've talked about all kinds of cool stuff on this Entrepreneur Master Series, but that's two of the live trainings you get per month included in your membership. Not only that, you get two times a month, to dial in and I do a one hour open Q&A. Anybody who's a member of my membership program can come in and ask any question they want about entrepreneurship, leadership, financial literacy, sales. It's a, it's a live coaching opportunity for you to get in twice a month to ask questions. And for 55 bucks, you can't get a coach as good as me for $55 a month. It's just not going to happen, but you can get it right here in the TSC. And then the fourth thing, or the third thing I do, like the fourth or fifth meeting I do a month, it's called a success lecture. And so once a month, I get on here and I talk for about an hour on some topic. So for instance, I did one earlier called how to double your revenue without any extra hard costs. And it was all about sales. There's this cool little thing I can teach you about sales, but it's not just sales. I do financial literacy and leadership and entrepreneurship. You get all of that. Plus you get 20% off any of my courses, 10% off live group coaching. You get all of that. And you get the library of everything I've ever done on video when you log into the portal. So if you ever miss one, or if you get to register for one, it's always there. You can go back and get it. It's all for 55 bucks a month. You can't beat it. So go to the real slash TSE. I will put that in the chat box so that you can check it out. It's the real jasonduncan.com slash TSE, which stands for the successful entrepreneur. So speaking of successful entrepreneurs, let's go back to Jay. Jay is my guest today, and he is the guy that we're going to talk about with personal branding. So I'm going to kick things off today, Jay, by asking you this question. Let's set the stage. What is personal branding? What is that? What does that mean? Personal branding, literally the easiest way to digest it is you selling you. That's it. There's nothing more than that. It isn't about the color scheme of your website. It isn't about how you make people feel. It isn't about what you come out and you say when you walk on stage. Dude, at the end of the day, it's just how you're selling you. And that's the first Thank you for that question, Jason, because today, every morning I do a, the way I get myself out there is an Instagram live in a clubhouse every morning. How am I expected for other people to show up if I don't show up myself? And I think the thing that I always tell people is we've got to get out of our head with labels a lot, right? We want to position ourselves. Well, I'm an entrepreneur, man. I'm an investor, man. You just do you. Just get yourself out there. And I think the big thing today, Jason, what I'll share with everybody, and I appreciate, really appreciate Brianna. Jamal, Larry, Timothy, Wendy, Jason, yourself for having me really showing up, right? Well done for showing up because 90% well, of people don't, dude. Yeah. Well, half the battle is just showing up to fight. You got to be there. And that's why I, right. I, I like the concept of personal branding. Um, you know, branding, most people think what's your logo? It's a, this thing. Now that's, that contributes to how people perceive the brand, right? Yeah. But it's, it's more than just that. So um, what is, um, when was it that you first understood or had a perception of personal branding as the wave of the future? I heard you talking one time on, I think it was on a television program. I don't remember which one it was. You were talking on TV and you said, hey, 
Um, the, the way that we engage now is we don't engage with companies, we engage with people. And that's why personal branding is so important. They want to buy from the person. That's why no matter what business you're in, you've got to, you've got to have a personal brand. When did you first become aware of that as a concept? When I, you know, I, to everybody listening, it's an Australian accent. Let's just clear that up. That's the first <laughs> elephant in the room. Before, I don't want to listen to the guy. Where is the accent from, babe? I don't know. I think it's London. I, it's Australian. Let's clear that up. And it's a real pocket square. Some lady today in the elevator. I love your hanky. Hanky? My grandpa wipes his nose with hankies. It's a $90 pocket square. Let's get it right. Anyway, <laughs> so, so, you know, the first way I discovered it when I was doing magic, I, I started my career in show business, right? 16 years ago as a magician. And it never really hit me until now I'm present to it. But to your question, when I started getting booked for events all over the world, speaking on stages for Fortune 100 companies, as I call it in Australia, the Billion Dollar Boys Club, McDonald's, Starbucks, Virgin, Hilton, Audi, right? The billion dollar companies. I kept getting booked, not because I was the best entertainer or a best speaker. I was getting booked because of me. I was getting chosen because I connected. I had a personality that resonated with people booking me. And now in 2022, especially now, I believe that Jason, like we are as, as humans, we, we're, we're a lot more, we have a lot more choices now. You know, we don't just buy the first thing that gets told to us. You know, we all have pain and problems when we're looking to find a solution. We know there's multiple different choices now. So now it's like, okay, well, I'm going to spend my money. I'm, I'm going to get someone to sell my house, right? Look at Miami. There's so many realtors here. Why am I choosing this realtor over the next guy? Both good, both look good, both sound good, both are credible, both been in the game, both trustworthy. Why am I giving her my business? my three and a half million dollar property that she's going to make three to four and a half percent on, right? The next, this guy, something I connect, she connected with me on whatever or however, but it's the person. Isn't it funny how, yeah. you know, if we're all, if we're all honest with ourselves, no matter what we're doing for a living, yeah. we're all purchasers of something. So, so forget the fact that you're the seller, but when you purchase things, you purchase right. from somebody, whether it's a realtor, like you said, or whether, right. You're purchasing some sort of service where you're, you know, hiring a new coach, a new counselor, whatever it happens to be doing. At the at the end of the day, most people in that field, most people are going to be able to do approximately the same thing. I get it that there are going to be strengths and weaknesses, and I'm not downplaying that at all. Right. But at the end of the day, aren't we a lot of times making the decision based on our perception of I like this person, this is a cool person, or I remember them. Like if yeah. they have a remember, like your name is JJ, that's easy to remember. I don't even, I've never even asked you on the podcast if that's your real name or how that works, no. but <laughs> JJ is easy to remember remember uh what like you remember that's, things that's brand, man. yeah that's if you want if you want to go more into like the personal branding we are the people branding is all the senses how do you make them feel how do you make them what do you make them think about you when they when you leave what do they say about you right when they first see you what emotion does that give them that is branding the five senses touch taste sight hear smell right may not taste the person but maybe you might look at my jacket and this red activates something of you. Whoever knows, maybe you used to wear like, used to be a dancer and you used to wear red and that brought up a taste. I don't know, but it's the emotion behind it. So yeah, man, it, it comes down to that. Likeability is really important. You know, it's people, you know, Jason, you ever watch something on Instagram and you get what they're trying to say, but they're saying it completely in the wrong way. Like someone on Instagram, you know, this, this comes up, every i don't know month or two people just like f what people think if you don't like me f you it's like guys i know what you mean by that but you, you're positioning it wrong you don't want to say f you to the world you want people in your corner what you're trying not to do is please everybody that's the way it should be positioned yeah. you want, dude you want people to like you you know i said this to you on the podcast like when people like you they listen to you when they listen to you they learn from you they learn they trust you when they trust you, that's everything. But you ain't gonna give someone your three and a half million dollar property that you sat on for 20 years if you don't like the person. No one's ever said, hey, why did you give the guy the deal? Dude, I hated the guy. Huh? <laughs> no, dude, I, he connect, you know, I didn't like him in the beginning, but I connected with him now. 
You know, that you may say that, or no, I actually like the guy. He's actually, you know, he's he's humble, or I connected with him, or you know what, his dad passed away the same, the same the way my dad passed away, you know, whatever. So I think Jace, this is what people forget. You know, it's it's this is what this is what will help you win forever. Yeah. The connection, not the clothes. No one's closing on a close. Like you may think, yeah, this line's going to close anybody. No, man, it's it's because you connected with them. That might give you a short term win, but then the short term win won't even last because the person will wake up to the trick. They'll wake up to, hang on, what did I just do? That's a magic trick, you know. You ever mean you ever like I this is what I did for a living, right? I made someone believe something that's not there. The next day, I get a message like, "Dude, I figured out how, how. I still can't believe how it's done." But in their mindset, it's different. That was a magic show. They know they're going in to be fooled. You don't want to be getting fooled in, in, in real life when you think it's real. Then you're more guarded. Then it makes for our job harder in life, Jason. When you're trying to talk to people about coaching and they've been screwed over by someone that promised in the world as a coach and now they're guarded. Now you have to work doubly as hard to at least get them to listen to you. Dude, that's hard, dude. Yeah. Well, why, in, you know, making people feel a certain way is the only way to get things done. And yeah. people, people will forget what you did, but they will always remember how you, they made that you made them feel, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think that's such a cool part of it. I mean, I could have bad service somewhere, bad service, but if the person was legitimately concerned with my feelings about, Hey man, I'm really so sorry that this happened. I'll go back. But if I, if, if I get good service, but they treated me like I interrupted their day. I'm probably not going back. Yeah. Like it's sort of the level of how service. Many, so no matter what business you're in, right. think about that. How many Let restaurants, up. Jason, how many restaurants do you go to? There's a Vietnamese place down the road here. I lived in Vietnam. Look, the, the place isn't even that good, but the lady's fun. She high fives me. She always asks me, asks me if I can be her husband to get her free visa to Australia. She, I laugh with her every time. I, I go there every week. I bring my friends. Like the food's good, but it's not great. But it's the, how she makes me feel. It's the brand. Ironically, once again, right? I'm not going to the Vietnamese restaurant. Where am I going to? Her. Yeah. Yeah, of course she's got the suit. That's, yes, I went there for a reason. But look at how you go to and buy things now. You want something to eat. Well, am I in the mood for soup? Not really, but I know it's good. I like her. All right, I'll just go back there anyway. Like, you know, that's those, the, the way we make decisions for me is fascinating now. People forget about that. Well, let's get into, let's get into the meat of this. I want to tell everybody on the, the tier live, you can ask a question or hear live in the session if you want. Here's yes. what I'm going to ask you to do. Go down to the bottom of your Zoom screen. There's a Q&A bubble. Hit the Q&A bubble box. Type in your question. Both Jay and I will be able to see those and we can answer those live here in the session. We'll either answer them out loud or we can type an answer. If it's a quick answer, we can type it back to you privately. It doesn't have to go out to everybody. So if you've got a question about personal branding or a personal question, uh, not too personal, but a personal question about Jay or about me, make sure to do that. This is what makes webinars like this much more um, valuable if you guys engage. So if you got questions, type it in the Q&A bubble and we'll get to it. So Jay, I'm going to turn right. kind of, I'm going to kind of shut up for a minute and turn it over to you to give us your masterclass, your concepts, your big tips, your hacks about yeah. how to build, develop, and sustain a personal brand that closes deals. Right. Well, I, Jason, I appreciate you bringing me being, I appreciate you having me to be here. Let me speak English if I'm going to talk about personal branding today. <laughs> The big thing that I really want to share with everybody right now, the intention for me being here isn't about me. It's not about Jason. Actually, it's about you, right? Yes, there are people watching this after, but I appreciate the people that showed up and that are actually here live. So this is what I love to hear from everybody live. Larry, Jamal, Corey, Brianna, and Timothy, and obviously Wendy and Jason. Guys, what is the one thing that you need help with today? Write it in the chat box. Right? I will give you a couple of cool, cool staples of personal branding, but if you can leave today going, hey, that's actually one thing. If I could get solved today, I would leave this webinar feeling valued, feeling like I actually won something. Let's, let's help you, right? If I, you know, one thing, if, if you guys want to be good at personal branding, eventually you'll learn how to speak. 
Speaking is a great way to build authority. It is the number one way actually to build authority. That's why I speak on as many stages as I can. This is a stage for me right now. And to give you a bit of a, an advancement with speaking, don't play to you, play to the crowd. I'm playing the crowd. I'm speaking to the people. I'm engaging the people. That's what they want. They don't want a perfect cookie cutter, Bobby and Ken, you know, you don't see me with the keynote. Well, let me bring up the slides, you know, because I'm working towards the people in the room. So listen, if you're listening right now, right, which I know you are, because I'm going to call your name out, Corey, Jamal, Larry, Larry Timothy, and, 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 and Wendy, and then obviously Jason, what is the one thing that you'd like to have help with today? in regards to PR, in regards to personal branding, do not be afraid, please, to ask me an obvious question because the obvious questions, that's honest. If you're struggling on knowing what to post, that's okay. I'll share that with you. If you're going, hey, Jay, you know what? I'm hitting a wall. You know, we're spending 10 grand a month on advertising, but something's not working. What would you recommend? Ask me an advanced question. That's what we do every day here in my agency with my staff and I. You know, we're doing everything from, you know, helping people figure out their positioning and messaging in the marketplace to helping companies like, hey man, we, we, we've been dropping 15 grand a month in this PR agency, it ain't working, what would you do? I'm like, well, scrap them and don't give me money for the first month and let me show you what we could do. And they're like, whoa, where's this Australian confidence coming through, right? All right, so, well, we, got, so, we got a few questions yeah, in Yeah, let's go, let's roll, let's roll let's with some so yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Brianna, Brianna Stone like asks, how do you know if you have good branding or if what you have is yeah. working? Also, hey, where am I seeing? Am I again, do I get to see these questions or where where uh yeah, open your QA bubble box? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Silly me. I'm not even re no panelists. I'm I'm reading the how come I can't see the questions? Uh don't oh, QA, how do you go? Sorry, yeah, yeah, I got you. This is a webinar. Okay, yes. All right, Brianna. Okay, where do you start? No, no, no. The, the, do, do that. There's two Brianna. So oh, there's two, two, two. Sorry. How do yeah. you know if you have good branding or what good, good, you have okay, is cool. working? Yeah, cool. Great. So what, this is what we're going to do. We're just going to answer a couple of questions. I'm going to get into the staples, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you what's possible. Then we come back and close with questions, right? Cool. All right. So how do you know if you have good branding or what is working? Okay, great. The thing that I spoke to Jason when we connected, I'm real tangible. I don't like giving you filler and fluff. So I don't know. The way I know is I go ask people. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Brianna, do you go get coffee every day from somewhere? I'm assuming you do, right? Do you go to lunch every day or do you go to lunch three, four times a week? Okay. The point of this, and everyone can use this, use people when you buy something from them as a guinea pig for a focus group. So go to someone at Starbucks, go to someone at the, the wait, waitress at lunch and ask them a question. Right, sometimes out for coffee, but at home, all right. But if you go out, right? If you go out, this is a great, great way to ask a question, get instant feedback. The whole outcome of this answer is getting you feedback, right? What you're looking for is consistency of messaging. So what you're trying to find out, right? Is you wanna know what they feel and see and think about you when they look at you. Could be a post, could be website, could be what you do for a living. You will find out very quickly if it's clear. And if it isn't, there's your first um. There's your first hiccup. So what I used to do is when I, I'm always out and about, and anytime I would have a question about something that I wouldn't, I would don't want someone I know's response because they're emotional. They know me. I go to someone at the Starbucks line, like someone in the line. Hey, what's up, man? Hey, give me a favor, straight into it. What do you think of that photo? Well, honestly, well, I think you do this. Or, hey, this website, what, is this, what does this say about me? And I'll ask a few people and I'll get some honest feedback. And it's very powerful stuff. Now, let's say you aren't going out to coffee in the next few days. This is where you need to be okay. And I'll get into the, the, the meat of this in a second, that you need to be okay with getting feedback that you may not want to hear, right? Like at the end of the day, no one will say to you, that's good branding. They won't, they'll, no one ever says that. No one's ever said to me, May Jay, I love your branding. Jay, I love how you do this. That makes so much sense to me. I really appreciate the way that you spoke to that person. That's what they're saying, you know? So Bri Bri Brianna, let me ask you another question. Like, 
define to me when you say, or oh, what you have is working. What is that? Is it a job? Is it a sales page? Is it what you do for a living? Right? Is it your whole online presence? Give me some more meat to that question and I can help you out and I'll, I'll move on. Brianna Jackson, where do you start? It's easy to look at a business branding and how do you start with a personal perspective? Great, great. Okay, perfect. Brianna, here's the deal, right? Personal and personal and business now, as Jason was saying at the beginning of the conversation, it's fused now. I have still clients say to me, well, I'm going to make my own personal account for my close friends <laughs> and then a business one. That's confusing. I know what you mean by that because you don't want to show too much of your personal life with your business life. But here's the deal. You can fuse it and you can still be okay with how you come across to the world. Jason, I think a lot of people are still stuck in the mindset sometimes that they can't be themselves. There has to be this kind of like, I'm in a suit and now I can be at home and relaxed. You can mix both of and I've done it. Not just for myself, for everybody else, right? Yeah, so, I want to tag if I could. I would like to tag on. Yeah, tag, 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 man. That too, because I, tag, tag, tag. I love, I love that you broached this subject, Jay. Because this is a question I think a lot of people ask. Even though I'm not a branding expert, they ask, "Hey, do I do I have a personal page and do I have a business page?" Now, I, I think on on certain platforms like Facebook, yeah, there's a person. There's obviously a personal. Thing, and then there's a legit a business page, but but in most places that that's not necessary. You don't need to have that. What people want to see is who you are. Now, yeah. the one limitation I would make that is like if you're trying to build a brand around being helpful, courteous, kind, you're a good coach. You don't want to post pictures of your drunken nights out with your girlfriends. That's right, probably right. not a good idea yeah. because that that that's off brand. That goes against it. Or if you're a Trump supporter versus Biden supporter, like you might want to leave that out. You might not want yeah. to mention that you got to be, you got to keep the branding in mind. Don't you think? I mean, you got to think, what are people, how yeah, are people going to feel about this before you post it? But I don't think you separate personal. Now, can you post pictures of your kids on a thing that's mostly about pages for business? Sure. But just be careful not to post the things that's going to go off brand so much that people go, eh, I don't think I want to work with that person. Yeah, people people are really people are really touchy. Like, I'm loud. I'm Australian. That's just, that's a wrong label. Australians are actually very quiet people. I'm just the loud Aussie guy. But at the end of the day, I'm still careful of what I put out to the world because I know how emotionally in control the world is of themselves. Right? If I if I put out right now in my stories, I hundred percent guarantee I love Donald Trump. People will be like, I'm unfollowing you. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I could have clients. Now, I don't think they would, but you never know. I could have clients be like, hey, man, you know, listen, I'm probably thought, like, I'm actually thinking I'm not renewing next month. It's crazy. I, and, and it annoys me that people aren't control of things like that. But I just know being in the media space for my whole life, you don't need to trigger people for no reason. Now, coming back to, you know, Brianna, it was Brianna, right? Before. Yeah. You can fuse in your personal life to make it, and this is where the personality comes in. People don't want Barbie and Ken anymore. We don't want cookie cutter. So you can do it without sharing everything, but do it enough that people can get to know you a little bit. I think the other thing that comes up, Jason, a lot, like people are like, well, you know, I had this one lady, well, you know, when I was younger, I used to have a bulimic problem. I said, great, but we don't need to share that. Oh, really? No, you don't need to share your deepest, darkest secrets the stuff that makes you very uncomfortable. Hey, have you ever had a bad breakup? Oh my gosh, I was, great, great. Have you ever had a bad business partner? Great. Guys, for, to, to bring, give you a move, stories can be based on two things, pain or pleasure. Think of five times in life that made you, that have made you, that is hurtful. Hey, it could just be, hey, you had bad sushi one night. Dude, I got some great stories about that. I got a I, dude. I was on this date once, and we're in Vegas. I used to live in Vegas, and man, I was looking forward to this date for so long, like a week and a half. But that was a long countdown, right? She was flying flying back into Vegas. She was a dancer, right? And you know, was she she was dancing on the strip. I was also dancing on the strip, and you know, I was in uh, I was doing magic, but I was you know all the other fun stuff. So she was dancing, and like, I was meeting at the sushi places. All you can eat sushi. 
right? So Vegas has some great sushi places. And it was like $27 and it, like, it was just amazing. I literally must have either been so nervous, my body was so sensitive that for some reason, the sushi must have been off. The first bite, I just went, uh-oh. And, and, and something happened. Like my, my, it went from the mouth straight to out. You know, that was an uncomfortable experience, right? Now, the reason I share this with you is two reasons. One, see how I've moved you with the story right now. Two, see how it's relatable because we've all, been, we've all had an interesting story, right? Three, it's funny. That's pain, but that pain isn't my deepest, darkest secrets. It's just a funny story about how I had salmonella poisoning on a really important night where I thought I was going to get it on like Donkey Kong, right? That's funny, right? <laughs> pleasure could be hey, like pleasure could be a multitude of different things. Hey, when you got married, hey, when you had your first child, hey, when you bought your brand new laptop because your laptop was so broken and you got it and you opened it up and it was so new, that's pleasure. People can relate to that. You I know? think that's a good that is such a good thing. I actually wrote that down uh, as a tactical tip, a takeaway for everybody here today from JJ. Say, Right. Think about five bad things that happen to you. Think about five good things that happen to you. And then tell those stories to your audience because people engage like that was a funny, <laughs> funny story. Maybe somebody walks away and remembers that forever because, oh, that guy, Jay, on, on, on that entrepreneur thing with Jason, that, that guy told that story. Yeah. You know, I should call him. He's he's in the PR. He kind of knows what to do. I should. I remember Jason, that story. Jason, that's so you know, it's so funny you say that because you talk about how people remember Jay and Jay. Dude, people, I don't really care what people remember, they just remember something. Because there's so much noise. Dude, I've been called everything from the jacket to Mr. Pocket Square, to Mr. Like, Mr. Mr. Joe Jonas, like to Mr. Like Crazy Hair Man, I don't care. Just are you remembering something? Because that's enough. Now, I would love for them to remember JJ from Miami, PR, he helps me do this. I just know people aren't like that. So you're 100% right. Sometimes you can, and I think we've, we've both felt this, someone can be spitting so many things at you, then the moment they say one thing, that's it. It could be the most simplest thing. Someone could be listening right now and going, you know what, I've also gone on a date and I had Indian food and I had the worst, they boom sushi, that's it. That can literally be the trigger between I will give this guy a lot of money now or in the future than the next guy. And we don't know why, and maybe you're not even conscious to it. Hence well, why personal branding and sharing who you are is always super strong in the long game than the short game of persuasion and closing deals. Because yes, Jason, you and I am sure can move people to, onto a sale, but I want people to be like, I love this. I'm never leaving. I want to work with this guy. And then here's the powerful thing with personal branding. When you have trust with your audience or people who listen to you, dude, you can bring out anything and they'll buy. Hey guys, I'm writing this book. It's 50 bucks. Just get the link done. You didn't have to get on a call with them. You didn't have to close them. Dude, like look at Justin Bieber. And I know you're like, that's crazy, Jay. No, it's not. He has in, cra in crazy amounts of influence. Jason Justin Bieber brings out a fragrance line, $15 million in a day sales. Jay, Justin Bieber has got nothing to do with fragrance, but it's Justin Bieber. If I wedge, if I buy this, Justin's all over me. You know, look at the marketing behind that. Crazy, right? But it's the same, it's the same thought process, but with you. How many gotta... sports stars have brought out a have brought have done something completely different and people have supported them? It's got nothing to do with the industry they're in. Hey, man, I like Shaq. You know? Hey, I like George Clooney. He's bringing out, he's got the tequila ranch. I want that. I want some of that. You know? Well, I, uh, I, heard, this, uh, I heard this from somebody, and I want to know what your opinion is. <clears throat> they said that, you know, everybody, it's easy to say, and everybody <laughs> says it, that they're better. And their marketing and their branding, they try to say, we're better. We're better than the competition. We're better. But the reality is, you shouldn't strive to be better or, or in your I marketing agree. to be better. It's to be different because it's the different that is memorable, the better everybody says it. So if I'm the, Hey, I'm the best coach in America. Okay. But, but if I have a brand that is memorable, 
when they're thinking about a coach, are they going to remember the one who said they were the best? Or are they going to remember the one that they remember? Yeah. yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, there was one guy in Singapore once, and I liked his marketing behind this. He said, I'm the second best chef in Singapore. I went, who's the first? He goes, don't worry about it. Come see me first, though. And then I'll tell you who the best is. Like, stuff like that's clever. I'm yeah. the second best. Like, Memorable. See, well, if he's the second best, who's the first? Like, yeah, you know? I think, you know, you just, you just... It, you just got me thinking like maybe instead of saying I'm the best, Hey, I'm not the best, but I connect with you better than anyone else. Ooh, that's pretty, that's deep. Cause what do we want more now? We want more connection. What happened in the 2020 where everyone got stuck at home. This is why the whole video thing is so powerful now. Dude, the, the days like 2019, you would never do this. This would be for a very exclusive group of people and no one would ever show their face. Now, Jason, people are having to sell themselves to people around the world they've never met on a video call. Gone are the days when it was a, a was a, was like a piece of paper and a LinkedIn like a resume. Now you literally have to sell yourself on video. Okay, everybody, we've got this role. It's an IT role, one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year. All of you are qualified. At the end of the day, I got to choose one person today. This is what they're thinking. I've been told I'm going to have five interviews for the next thirty minutes. I'm choosing someone by the end of that. I have to. So. Um, they, they don't know this, but it's not whoever the better person is. You're all being vetted. You're all good. You're all good for the job. Who do I like? That's what it comes down to, man. That's right. Well, let's go back to Brianna. Uh, yeah, Brianna's yeah. question. She back. says, "How do I know if you have good branding?" You answered that question, but yeah. she said, "Or what? Or how do I know if what I have is working?" And she went in to answer. She said this in the uh, the chat. Yeah. Logo, website, that type of thing. How do you know if that's working? What do you think about that, Jay? How do I know if it's working? Well, look, at the end of the day, like there's two answers to this. Like, how's your bank account right now? You know, like at the end of the day, like it's going to come down to clients and cash flow. You know, now to give you a little bit better, a better answer to that, once again, like ask, go ask some people, hey, what do you think of this? Does this make sense to you? I would always ask everybody this. Is it super clear on what I do? I'm very big on messaging to the marketplace, Jason. Like before we get people come to us, they go, Gee, I've got this money. I want to get it out to the world and advertise. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. Before we do that, have you done a diagnostic of exactly, do you know who, you, who you're going to help? And you know, do they know exactly what you do? Yeah, 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 yeah. We've been doing this. Okay, let's check this. I want you to go on your Instagram right now and say there's a $500 if you exactly tell us what we do. You know how many people get it right? One or two out of thousands. I tell them, I tell personal brands, go up there, like put a, put a video up and put a photo of you and say like a question, like what do I exactly do? Or, you know, who do I exactly help? Basically get some feedback. If you get it right, I'll give you $500 gift card. You get, you get responses on that. And if that isn't the exact messaging and you're spending all this money, you're literally going out and advertising the wrong message to the market. You know? That's a good, that's good, Jay. Thank you, man. Let's go to, uh, if you don't mind, you want to look at Fritz. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's see what next. Let's Fritz run. says, uh, what marketing channel is the best channel to use to help Instagram. build your personal Instagram, brand? Instagram, baby. I'm, I'm all in for IG. Jay, IG is going to shut down. No, you're going to shut down with that mindset, man. IG ain't shutting. It's Facebook. Facebook and Instagram are like brother and sister. Dude, they ain't shutting down. Mark may be going to the metaverse, but Instagram's staying on earth, man. <laughs> it's staying. Yeah. Listen, the reason why I like Instagram is because Facebook, when you're on it, there's too many things that are confusing. It is just, just too messy. LinkedIn, it's very corporate. And I feel like in my opinion, it's there's an element of like, I don't know if this person's putting on an act. It's just, it's just a little bit facade for me. Instagram, the great thing about it is when you're on someone's Instagram account, like you're on their account. Like you're not, you're not distracted. Like, look, if you're on my Instagram, right? You, you, there's nothing else. See, there's not, it's just me. That's all it is. So there's, you got visuals, you got photos, you got links. Like it's very clean and clear. So I would be spending a lot of your time on Instagram. However, the question that you have to ask yourself is this, and I want everybody to take this really seriously right now. What do you want by growing your personal brand? What do you want? 
one of the things that bothers me a lot, and this is just welcome to business, is that people will get up and say, man, you got to you got to jump around on TikTok all day or, hey, you got to do Clubhouse every day and make to make it, you know? And I'm one of the people that says you should do a Clubhouse all the time. It helps. But at the end of the day, I always end with this. At the end of the day, though, what do you want? What, do you, what outcome do you want out of it? I'm trying to go global. I'm trying to go numbers. I'm trying to get, I, I know the power of attention and advertising. So I try to use a lot of different platforms. But hey, if you're just trying to find 10 people to pay you, let's say 10 grand a month or 10 grand a year, right? It's a hundred grand and, and that's the first milestone for you, right? Then what I would do is go for more of a niche approach. Where do those people hang out? How can you just be so good at wherever that pool of people are? Because Jason, I think the problem that a lot of people face with personal branding and you get it in being a business coach, it's confusing. Dude, it's so much for people to handle. You know, they, they, there's all their... They take all their courage and effort and, and the income that they want to spend and they've got their money and they're like at the beginning of this field. They're like, dude, or like a theme park. Bro, I've got the tickets, but I can go anywhere. I don't know what to do. And it's confusing. Then they back out. That's what happens with the internet. And then the moment they get one piece of rejection, that's even another worse. They're like, done. I've gone back to the post office. It's easier, you know? Well, you know, uh, Jamal asked the question, do you think the idea of personal branding is commonly misunderstood? And I think you just answered that, yes, people do misunderstand it. But let me ask the, the deeper question, and the, I would love to hear your opinion on this. Why do you think that the, con the idea or the concept of personal branding is so misunderstood? Let me ask this for a while. Why do I think it's misunderstood? I think the better way they'll answer this is like, stop, Pe people overthink of what they have to be in like personal brand or have to just start getting yourself out there. You're selling you. I think coming back to that first thought, Jace, I don't know if that's the perfect answer for this, but at the end of the day, you're just trying to promote yourself. You're just trying to like showcase how amazing you are, right? You're just trying to sell you, right? You're a brand, yes, but at the end of the day, you're a person. It's not brand personal, it's personal personal it's me 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 yeah so. i agree with that i would add to that too uh that the reason i think it's misunderstood uh jamal because that's a good question the reason i think it's misunderstood is because i think we understand we misunderstand that what a brand is and we typically think that a brand is a logo uh, or colors yeah, or something yeah, like that you know and i'm i'm known as the real jason duncan i've got my hat on today it's got my logo that is part of my personal brand um, and and I, the reason I chose to do that, and I'm going to ask some questions of you later, Jay, about this, but the reason I chose to do that is I want it to be memorable because now when I introduce myself as the real Jason Duncan, people go like, okay, well, who's the fake one? I go, I own that account too, you know, but I, <laughs> you know, no matter, it's, it's memorable, but the brand is I'm the guy who shows people how to exit their businesses without yeah. selling them to live the exit lifestyle. So who does that? The real Jason Duncan does that. The, the logo is a support of that. But I think people misunderstood. It's like, I'm just going to spend, you know, a thousand dollars on getting the killer logo and great, great website. It's all going to be color matched. That's my brand. Well, no, if your brand that that's, those are inanimate things. Your brand is, I love what you said, personal. It's personal branding. It's about who you are and how you make people feel. So I think Jamal, that's why it's misunderstood. Yeah, put the thousand bucks on yourself. You're selling you. Maybe go get a new wardrobe. That's a probably a good start. Maybe go figure out, hey, what's going to work for me from a style point of view? Hey, for most of us, most people like to fix your image a little bit. And I'm not talking about a weight image too. You know, they did this study, Jason. You know how many people were leaned over like this because of their phone, because of their laptop, right? There's this like exercise you can do about stretching your back so you're actually better posture for the world. I did this and I actually was like this. I was like, oh shit, I got to fix this. So I started doing back exercises and I feel my frame is a lot better now. Like that is spending money on me to best represent me and, and to fix my health as well, you know? And, and I'll tell you one thing, like, and people, this is the, the thing where I get a little tr in trouble a lot, especially on Clubhouse, because I'm not the one to be afraid to say, how many people in life have booked you because of the color of your logo? Hey man, I really love, I really, I'm willing to like work with you forever. Hey, just out of curiosity, why did you choose me? Man, I love the way that you articulated the, 
the, the D on your hat. What? But no one would ever say that. Hey man, I chose you because you really connected with me. You did something that someone hasn't done before. I really appreciate that you made that extra phone call. I really appreciate you remembered my wife's birthday and you sent us a gift. That is why I'm ready to work with you. Yeah. yeah your brand is more about what people think about, feel, and remember about you more than anything else. Think it's not about cool, what they man. see. Yeah. So I got a, there's another question here. Timothy Griggs asks, I need, he says, he's being honest. I need branding. <laughs> I need to learn to speak and engage the audience and get followers and build trust. Where's the best platform to start? Yeah, I would say Instagram because it's easy to be managed, right? It's a lot easier. Like, you know, yeah, go on Facebook. Like that's good because there are people on there as well. But like, let, Timothy, let me tell you something. And, and thank you for saying it like this. The other thing, Jason, too, like people go, they need branding. No, they need structure of strategy. Branding is, it's, I know you're saying that, Tim, because that's what we hear about. And I would say the same thing if I were you. But at the end of the day, you need a, you need a strategy. You need to be clear on like, hey, man, before we go out and get followers and build trust, Tim, do you know what you're talking about? Like, do you actually know who you are and what you're trying to tell the world? And if you don't, man, that's cool. That's why you can play. And that's why you have these conversations with us online to voice to voice what you're feeling and what you're thinking, right? And then when you start putting out content and then when you start to be consistent, then the followers and the trust will come, you know? And, and, and that's, that's the thing. And I would say to you, Tim, like if you were going to come and work with me, and, and by the way, Jason, I should mention, like if anyone's interested in getting some personalized help or getting verified and getting in Forbes, there's a link. Have we, have we got that link there, Jason, as well? Yep, it's up. Yeah. Yeah, send me, send me, send me a DM or, or just press that button, book in a call. You know, obviously it's for people that are serious and, and really want some specialized, you know, help that I can help them get to the next level. But Tim, I would say to you at the end of the day, like, hey, what do you exactly do, Tim? And if you can't spit that out to me in a sentence that I that it makes me understand, then there's an issue right there. Jason, you ever ask someone at a party, hey, what do you do? Uh, well, uh, you know, I like well, real estate. You know, like, well, I used to be in pharmacy, like, but what I really want, like, dude, they can't even spit it out. Dude, you That's shouldn't scary. have to think about it. Like, man, you, you'd be surprised, man. People like me, they can't tell me exactly what they do. They just, hey, man, I do this, you know? Okay, cool, man. Awesome. How long have you been doing it for? Great. You know, well, I'm doing this now, but I tried this. I like, if you're confused, how do you think I'm going to feel? You know, That's so Tim, go Instagram, man, go Instagram. And, and Instagram. if anyone, you know, and everybody's listening on the replay, Jason, did I tell you the thousand dollar, what do I do game? Did we have, did I tell you that one with you? Yeah. Did, have a, did I tell you that one? Yeah. Tell me again. Yeah. So if I was going to give you a thousand dollars right now, everybody, and you had to teach me something that I left going, wow, that was super valuable. What would that thing be? Like if you, if I give you a thousand dollars for your time for an hour, I'm like, teach me something that I would be like, wow, that was powerful stuff. What is that? That is a great way to start off to find out what your skill set is. Yeah. I think being clear on what it is that we do. Um, listen, we've all been to that, that cliche chamber of commerce meeting and we're walking around. And so what Dude, do you that do? Was well, all I'm, over. A, I'm a that roofer. Was all I'm a realtor. I'm a counselor. I'm a whatever. You know, we do those. Th we do that. When, listen, when we say, what do you do? We're just being polite. We're kind of curious, but we really don't care. And especially if you just answer, like you said, I'm a realtor. Okay. I don't care. But if you say, <laughs> I help people move into the dream that they thought about. Oh, yeah. Like, welcome. We're, we're talking about hooks now. Messaging. Okay. Yeah. What does that mean? What, what do you mean you move, help people move into a dream? Well, I help people find their dream house. Oh, okay. So you're a realtor. Yes. So that's later. But if yeah. you just say I'm a realtor, they don't care. Nobody cares. When, when I was, when, you know, I was running full-time my LED lighting company. Um, you know, if I just walked in and said, well, I own an LED lighting company, like eyes glaze over, nobody cares. But if I say, well, I, I show people how to spend the money on things that really matter that rather than spending money on electric bills, what would you do if you didn't have to pay your electric bill? And now they're like, what? Yeah, that's what I do every day. Well, how do you do that? Well, I put in LED lights. They save a lot of energy. You know, th that gives me the opportunity to then really tell them what I do. But if I yeah. just say I own a lighting company, that doesn't matter. 
Yeah. You got to tell them why. And not even this big why thing, Simon Sinek, good know your why. We could get into that. But it's like, what do you do? Make it memorable, not better, but memorable. I love yeah. it. Yeah, dude, I love that. That's We call that in our game, the hook. You know, let's say there were five people about to be chosen by a TV producer to go on Ellen, right? All of you are realtors. Ellen comes up to you. What do you do? By the fourth person, you're not going to say I'm a realtor. You're going to say, Ellen, I am the person that will make that house that you've always dreamed about come true in 90 days. Oh, welcome. Welcome to the show. You know? That's different. That's different. Well, yeah. we got another question here. Yeah. Uh, is Fritz just asked, is personal branding what you want people to walk away knowing about you? That's a pretty good question. Like me? Just in general. Is personal branding what you want people to walk away knowing about you? Is that what that is? If we defined it, personal branding. Is, oh, is personal branding what you want people to know away? Uh, I get you, get you. So... No, no, you, you want, no, not at all. You want people like, what you want people is to go, wow, they can help me. Wow, I connected with them. That's the first thing you want. I like the person, he connected with me. Now, maybe your solution isn't to a pain or problem they have now, but when they do, you want them to come to you, you know? Yeah. So, so, so maybe, but I don't frame it like personal branding. I just want people to go, hey, I had a good experience with that guy because I know the power of karma with that. And you'll be surprised when, when you don't know someone's going to vet for you. Vet is like, man, we'd be your wingman when you don't know it. And you never know that the girl that you met at the coffee shop, her husband may be the decision maker of the company that you're going to hire in two years. And she's sitting with her husband, right? At the coffee table, he's like, oh, I'm just stressed. I've got to choose between these couple of guys, the advertising agents. We're going to spend money, right? Babe, who do you think I should get? Oh, JJ. Yeah, I met him once at a coffee shop. He's super cool. That could be it. That could be it. And you would never know, or she may not even be present of it. I feel like that guy's a good guy, you know? And that was from giving someone an experience. Hey, man, what's going on, you know? It's about being memorable. I think that may be one of the biggest takeaways today is about being yeah. memorable. I have a funny story. Uh, you, you know, Brad Lee, you know who I'm yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah, so yeah. Brad, Brad was on my podcast last year and uh, he came in and we had met at one time at an event here in Nashville a couple of years prior to that. And we stayed in touch only as you would do on Instagram. We followed each other, that type of thing. But we weren't buddies talking on a regular basis. Yeah. Well, when I reached out, when actually his team reached out to me to ask to be on the show, when I reached back out to him, we had a Zoom call to talk about being on the show. And I said, hey, Brad, you remember that time we met? Uh, blah, blah, blah. This has been this has been three or four years ago. He said, do you remember? I said, do you remember that time we met in Nashville at that, that thing? And he goes, no. Nope. He said, and this is what he said, you should have been more memorable. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like straight up and I'm like, okay, touche. You got me. That's but, but that's why I created a personal brand. That's memorable. That's something that people can remember. Yeah. And now he knows who I am <laughs> and he came on my show. So that's good. I love it. At least, Corey, at, least, at least he was honest with you, man. And this is what you just shared. Thank you. Because he would tell you when you joke about it, but a lot of people don't tell you. They just don't, they don't even present to it. What? Yeah. I don't remember, you know, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know you. Did we have that connect? Obviously you didn't, you know? Yeah. Should have been more memorable. Yeah. Corey asked this question. What are some tangible or practical tips yeah, besides wardrobe good. to build a brand from scratch? Good. All right. First thing, Corey, here's what I want you to do. Everyone can take this tangible piece away. And I think this is important. Three things that you want to be putting out to your social media. This is your staples. You know, when you go to the gym, there are, there are like only a five to six that actually exercise at the gym that you really need. Everything else is filler, right? It's like, if you have a good burger, Jason, in the Nashville game, like what does a burger consist of? I, American burger, not an LA burger where it's water grass, gluten-free lettuce, you know, alkaline water dripped over the top. We do, what's a real burger? American diner burger. That's cow, baby. It's got yeah, cow. yeah. Patty, patty, right? Beef, right? Cheese, bun, sauce. 
Am I, am I wrong? Maybe I'm not a real American. I think that's it, right? <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Okay. So this is the same thing, Corey, with you. Here it is, right? Everybody, this hasn't died, meaning this hasn't proved me wrong in my whole career. I just now understood how to articulate it. Okay. First thing you want to do is you want to, the content on social, first thing you want to be seen as an expert. So Corey, Jason, you guys are experts at one thing that the world isn't, right? You know more than most. Share that. What are the 10 things that people ask you about your industry? Example, Jason's getting in, well, he's a business coach, but Jason, you can say these things. Hey, when's the best time to have a business coach? How much should you pay a business coach? What does a business coach do? What a business coach doesn't do, right? That's four types of videos that you can explain to the market about educating your market about what you do. Your realtor, when's the best time to buy? When isn't the best time to buy? Should I Airbnb? Should I buy in Florida? Should I buy in California? What's the deal with overseas investments, et cetera, et cetera. Educational driven content core. So come up with like, okay, what are the five top things people ask me? You could also be more advanced and answer objections before they get on the call. One objection that I face all the time that I bring up always before a sales call or just before any kind of like connection before we possibly may work together is like, I explain to people very clearly, PR and advertising will not always be an instant ROI. So if you're coming into this going, I've got five or 10 grand or 20 grand to spend and I don't get return in a month, I'll say, don't do it. Then get an ads. But I'll tell you something, ads may not even combine either because you need trust with ads. So as in the catch 22, PR is trust, branding is trust. And you want instant ROI, it doesn't work like that. But hey, I get it. You need to advise your clientele about something that they wouldn't know, right? Second thing for social media, testimonials. You want other people saying amazing things about you. I can be the biggest blabbermouth, but if you can be like, Jason goes, hey man, I just had Jay on the show. Great time. We spoke about personal branding. If you're having an event or a podcast, get him. Another podcast host will be like, oh wow, if someone's vetted for Jay, maybe he's a good guy. So same thing in your field. Can you get a testimonial from a client that you've worked with? Or here's a great cheeky, I call it the word cheeky, Jason, testimonial grab. Text 10 people that you've helped, whether they've paid you or not. Hey, Jason, happy Tuesday. What's going on, man? Hey, Quirt, hey, out of curiosity, what was your experience like working with me? Question mark. What result did you get by working with me? Question mark. Oh, Jay, Jay, what's up, man? Dude, great, great, happy new year. Bro, you made me this amount of money. I felt this way about you. Thank you so much, this, 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 this. This is what you do. Screenshot it, white out the name, boom, put it to your stories. Abracadabra, testimonial within 15 minutes. You don't have to wait for them to get look pretty. It's real, it's authentic, it's honest. You put that on your stories, that's even more powerful. You know why? Because when you show someone a text message conversation, it's revealed content. Now people are like, oh, I'm reading into their personal life. That's a Hollywood PR trick right there. That's good. Yeah, that's yeah. Good. La, la, last one on the, on the content strategy and then personality. You don't want Bobby and Ken anymore. People want to get to know you. So this is where you can have a photo of you in your life with your wife, with your kids, you're traveling. Don't just have a photo and say, great day at the beach. Have a photo if you're at the beach and just go have a story. Maybe a time at the beach. Maybe how the beach makes you feel about something. Hey, maybe you weren't looking too crash hot and now you're really feeling a lot more better physically or mentally or emotionally. You can say, this photo means a lot to me. To most people, they see me at the beach. To me, this is the, the day that my dad passed away 10 years ago and are reminding me this. That's powerful stuff. So your th top three social media is top five things or top things that Educational driven you. content. Yeah, education driven content, third party validation, social proof, and personality driven content. Here's why it works. I don't like just spitting stuff out. One. People want to know the expert. They want to see you as the expert Two, They want other people saying amazing things about you. They want other people. You have, you have a hundred people looking up at the stars. Where do you think you're going to look? Oh, what's up at the stars, right? Old school sheep effect. Same thing with online. Third part, reveal and relate. When you reveal and you relate, ching, ching, 
here comes the cash flow, here comes the clients. All right. Powerful stuff that. Good. This is good stuff, Jay. Thank you, man. So Fritz asked this question, very tactical. Do you think a personal brand needs a logo? Yes, it does. You know what the logo is? Your face. Now to, to answer it properly, you can, man, if you'd like. But once again, Fritz, at the end of the day, people are knowing your smile. They're knowing your face. So you can have it. I just know personally, like no one has ever said to me, hey, Jay, can you send me like the way for me to close this deal is by sending me your logo, you know? Now, if we want to talk advanced stuff, maybe later, but let me ask you a question. Actually, I just thought of this. Jason, what does Tony Robbins logo look like? Uh, I don't know. Do you know? I know he wears a cap. I know that he's got a cap. It sort of looks like yours with like a flower. I, I remember that. I don't know what Tony Robbins logo looks like, you know? Fritz, you can have a logo, man. I just think don't get too caught up in it. If you like to worry on that, cool, but just remember it won't do anything. That's just more for you. Yeah. My opinion on that too, I, I think that the answer is, do you need a logo? I think the answer, that, that easy answer to that is no, you don't need one. Yeah, uh, yeah. But if you have one and it's done well, and it's consistent, same color, same brand, yeah. everything throughout the entire process that helps add to the memorabilia. So for, for, or for example, you know, I can hold this up. What brand is this? Nobody can read it. What brand is it? It's Coca-Cola, you know, because of the color. Uh, Marlboro is one of the, one of the most well-known brands in the world. Coca-Cola, Budweiser, these are all brands that you can remember because of branding logos. On a personal brand level, Jay makes a great point. We don't like some, one of the most popular and, and, and most successful coaches in the world. None of us could think, at least I can't think of what his logo is. I mean, it, it, I do. He wears that four leaf clover or whatever it is. Yeah, on his but his logo is his face, Jason. That's, yeah, it's him. It's him going... If you yeah, if you put if you put Tony clapping on stage, you go, I know who that guy is. He's that speaker guy, you know, for the for most of the world. Now most of the world still don't know who Tony Robbins is, ironically. But for the people that know him, it's like, oh, I know who that guy is. Donald Trump gets up. Do you know what Donald Trump's logo is? He has a logo, just so you know. Just so you know, he does. But he doesn't, no one knows what his logo is. It's Donald Trump. Yeah. Well, yeah. so what about what about this? This is, this is Mark. Mark just sent this question. This is a good one. This is a tough one. He says, I don't like social media because it's a time suck and it gets me distracted. So what advice do you have for us who don't like social media? Yeah. Well, Mark, let me ask you a question. Do you like money? <laughs> I, I do. I, I, Mark, I've had this, I've had this one thrown at me before on television. So I was, I come prepared on these ones, but Hey, no, look, Mark, I really appreciate you bringing this up because I understand what you mean with this, right? You feel like that. And because it probably you've said it's distracted you because you've realized you looked down at your phone one night at eight o'clock, I'm going to be in bed by nine 30 and it's 11 30 and you're still mucking around. I get it. I get it. I've been there. And Jason knows he, he rolls through with reels and TikTok every night, Jason. I remember you told me All right. oh, yeah. every night, but listen, Mark, here's the deal, man how do you that you don't like social media you need to position your mindset a little bit and go okay social media isn't going anywhere and if you're serious about really growing you and your brand to the next level that is where people are looking now can you still be super well off and live a great life without social media of course you can that's stupid that would be a lie for me to say that I just know from the space I play and the people I meet that people want to get to know you and there is a strategy without you losing. You don't need to jump around on TikTok all day. And I'll be honest, for me, my team runs my account, but I don't actually play on it as much as people think. I do my stories. I enjoy that, but it's very much like I turn off notifications. I play it when I want to play it. And I think, Mark, what you need to do, my man, is you just, there are, two, there are two limiting beliefs. The first one is you need to allow yourself to realize social media is a way for me to connect people, grow my business and have a legacy. And then the second limiting belief is like, I can still play it without losing myself in it. Because at the moment, that's what you see. 
Yeah. Well, and I think too, I would add to that, Mark, is that I, I, I hate Facebook. I'm just going to put it out there. I hate it. I hate the platform. I don't, I'm not a big fan of the company. I know they own Instagram and I was praising right. them earlier. For, forgive me for being able to delineate products from companies, but I don't like the platform Facebook. I don't, there's nothing about it to me that's redemptive. I don't like it at all. However, that being said, I understand that I have to play in that marketplace because that's where clients hang out. So what I've done is I built proper hedges around it to where I've got a Facebook page, the real Jason Duncan, but I never go there. I don't check anything, my personal stuff. I don't do anything with it. I use Facebook marketplace every once in a while. I sold an exercise machine yesterday because <laughs> it's January and that's what you do in January. But like, I don't use it, but, but my team knows that's where I need to be. So I run ads on Facebook. I, I, they're, they're on me about starting a group and doing these on Facebook live, these actual entrepreneur master series. So I will acquiesce to that, but I don't allow it to become the thing. I don't want it to be in my life, which is a time suck and a drag, but I really do like Instagram. I'm on there a lot. I spend a lot of time and I've made tens of thousands of dollars yeah, on yeah. Instagram uh, just, just in the last year, tens, now not hundreds, but tens of thousands of dollars. On LinkedIn, same thing. I don't spend a ton of time on LinkedIn as I used to. Instagram's kind of my, my jam, but I'm on Instagram too, or, or LinkedIn too. And I, I make some money there because of people knowing me, connecting me, trusting me. It, it's just, it's a way to keep the brand consistent. But I would say to you, Mark, because I know you, I happen to know Mark personally. I would say, Mark, listen, that's where your VA is coming to play. What is, get a what VA, is Mark what is Mark get a VA to run that. Mark's in, uh, Mark's in money and real estate. And oh. he start. yeah, he's in money and real estate. Mark, what are you doing, man? Make booking a call with me. I'll show you what you need to do. <laughs> Dude, you just need a plan and you just need to show you, oh, that makes sense now. That's all it is, dude. It's the, it's the same thing when we first got into like, I remember Facebook when Facebook, I was on MySpace. Do you ever play with MySpace, Jason, back in the day? No, I did, never got okay. on MySpace. But when we, when we were all on MySpace, like it was so pretty and it was like a little website. We could code it. And we're very proud of like, look at the new, like, I don't know if it was called a plugin at the time, but it was like, we could, you could buy new plugins. Then Facebook came out and it looked like coding. And I was like, no one's playing on that. That's disgusting. How could you even use it? But you go with the types. And, and I'm glad Mark brought that up because it's not, if he's thinking it, other people are thinking it. And I think a lot of times when I speak at events, Jason, I'll put up my hand, how many people actively use their Instagram for business? And it's less than people think. People just, they don't get how to use it. And I think Jason, no, I don't think, I know they see social media as sometimes as, well, you're the real Jason Duncan. You're JJ, like that's your thing. I'm just a little guy. I'm just, I, no one's going to listen to me. Mark, if I could tell you that if you post and you have a structure in next year, you could probably bring in another million dollars in revenue from your social media. Would you be interested in having a conversation with me? That he may go, now you got my attention. <laughs> well, I also know some of the things that Mark's got on his agenda for this year and social media is dead center of what he's got to be. Well, there you go, man. Yeah. And you know what, Mark, let me, let me show you one more thing. And Jason, I think this is one thing I wanted to just bring up is like the first thing you go to do before you get into personal branding is your mindset. Your mindset is like the same thing with everything before you go out to the battlefield, before I give you the techniques of how to hold the sword and how to like throw the dagger at the guy without him knowing, like you got to get your mindset ready before you go out to the playing field. And the first thing you got to do is you got to allow yourself to go, you know what? Some things I don't know with social, but allow yourself to go get help. Second thing you got to do is you got to allow yourself to stop saying to yourself, I'm shy and I'm an introvert and I'm not the real Jason Duncan, because you're telling yourself what you, you, you will tell yourself, you will tell yourself things that won't activate you to go do it, right? The labels that we tell ourselves. And the last thing, which is the strongest thing and the hardest thing, Jason, is that everyone will judge you. Deal with it. There, you, like, you, I'm judging you, Jason. You're judging me right now. We're judging everybody, right? The moment you leave your house, you're getting judged. So the first way to like deal with it is to bring it up. You know, you cannot, you, ghosts don't get booked. Ghosts become ghosts for reasons. If you stay a ghost, you will not get the opportunities. Yeah. Right? That's one of the biggest struggles that I had early on. And and when I started really playing pretty heavily in the, in the social media game, when I, as a coach, right. as a public, as a public figure, 
Um, it's this imposter syndrome that, you know, people are going to see through this or are going to know who I really am. And then they also, you know, and, and of course that's a lie. It's not true. Um, but the other part of that is there's this quote, there's this quote by a guy named Osho who said the greatest fear that humanity has to overcome is the fear of other people's opinions. And once you get, once you conquer that fear, you are now a lion, you're no longer a sheep. And yeah. I think that social media is that place that people play so small because they're afraid of other people's opinions that they feel like people will see through them. And once you play through that and pass that, now you, you like you said, you're going to have haters. It doesn't matter. People are going to judge you. I, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm not pretty sure, I'm confident that there are people out there that will follow me on Instagram that know me from real life that look at me and go, who does this guy think he is, man? Why did he post a picture? Why did he post a picture of that? He's just trying to show off. Listen, I don't care. You know what the deal is? I've moved on. They're still in the same place. That's why they feel that way. That's what we got to get past that imposter syndrome, that fear of other people's opinions, but it takes a while. And having a coach like Jay can help you move past that. And I'm going to promote his, uh, his call right now, because yeah, yeah. we're, we're down to about eight minutes left in our session. So if you are interested, if you're interested in talking with Jay, he's made a call available to you. Now, what I'm going to ask, because this is kind of my thing, and I've invited him as a guest, is don't waste his time. But if you're curious and you want to know, hey, well, how would Jay, Jay's agent, uh, Ace of Spades agency help me start, cultivate, grow a personal brand, book the call. It's in the chat box. All you got to do. And if you're right. listening to this on the replay, you can't see the chat box. So I'm going to read it out to you. It's Calendly. So if you don't know what Calendly is, it's well, going to be hard just, to book. Yeah, given this one, it's, it's aceofspadesagency.com forward slash call. C there you go. A -L -L. So Ace of Spades Agency, like Ace of Spades Agency.com forward slash call. Or you can go to the website and, and book in a call. And, and before you make a call, there are three, there are the three C's that I, do you know the three C's, Jason? You can use this one. This is Let's what go. I like. Three C's. First thing before you book in a call, I need you to be committed. How am I supposed to commit to you if you don't commit to you, right? Second thing is I need you to be coachable. I'm going to give you some things that are going to be uncomfortable. This is why I'm the coach and you're the student. So if you want to do it your way, it's probably not going to work out. And third thing, whole foods and fit, whole foods don't take fist bumps and high fives. They take cash. And if you want to grow, you need to invest in yourself. You know, you don't need 50,000 to start with me, but you need to have something to play with because at the end of the day, like free will only get you what you get for free, which is very little. Yeah. So if you're co coachable and committed and you got some cash to go, you know what, this is the year, dude. I'm ready to invest in me. I want an expert in my corner to show you me what's possible. And I think as we've shared over this last hour, not only from an income point of view, but from an impact point of view, man, it's, it's a powerful move that I can walk into a lot of the rooms now and I don't have to explain myself. People know who I am or they've seen me and there's trust. And that's a, like, I don't know what the ROI on that is. I think it's unlimited that I can walk in and introduce myself, like look at my profile and they immediately trust me. That dude, that I would, what is that to you, Jason? $10 million? What is that forever? Yeah. So, well, I would recommend, I would recommend everybody listening to this. If you're on live or you're watching the replay is go check him out. It's ace of spades, agency.com slash call. So just check him out, book a call, no obligation. It's free. Just, just go in there and see with an open mind, see what he could do for you. And in the meantime too, like this type of training is something that we offer here at the successful entrepreneur all the time. It's only 55 bucks a month. It's dollar for dollar, the best coaching you're ever going to get. And you're going to hear things about branding, about buying a, you know, hiring a coach. You're going to hear things about money, financial literacy, leadership sales. So consider that as well. You'll get some follow-up emails from me on that information there, but go book a call with Jay. JJ is awesome. He's fun. We hang out with, we had dinner and smoked a cigar here in Nashville when he was in town for the podcast, had a great time. And now he's here sharing his wisdom, his masterclass on building a personal brand. And I hope that it's been valuable for you, Jay. I'm going to give you the final word. Anything you want to say before we sign off for the end of our session today? Yes, sir. Listen, remember my friends listening, the words that you tell yourself will either make you fly or make you die. So come out and realize you've got a story to share. People want to hear from you. And the only thing holding you back is yourself. 
That's awesome. That is awesome. Well, thank you for attending this month's Entrepreneur Master Series. Jay and I are so grateful that you attended today. And again, for those of you that stuck it out for that 10 minutes while we we're having all those Zoom problems at the beginning, uh, kudos to you for doing so. Thank you so much for doing that. We apologize for the technical difficulties. We'll be back together again next Tuesday with Mitch Russo. Mitch Russo is going to talk about how to avoid wasting money on a business coach in 2022. But thank you for being here. I'm the real Jason Duncan. That's JJ. And we'll see you next time.